AMD is finally moving back to high-end gaming GPUs. This is one awesome leap. But before I get to that, you can bring AMD's new tech all over and this Ryzen gaming chip is coming to you. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Before I get to the first story, you've been watching all my rants about GPU prices, needing more than 8GB of VRAM, melting GPU connectors, all of that, but so many of you that watch still aren't subscribed. That number has been going up, but it's still only at 33.7% of you who regularly watch GamerMeld are actually subscribed. <laughs> We've got to do better here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button as well as the bell icon to get notified so you can be one of the first to get all the latest PC hardware news as it drops. Okay, it's news time and first up for today, as many of you know, AMD's newest super resolution tech, FSR4, has been a very well received upgrade thanks to its use of machine learning. You don't have anywhere near as many issues from ghosting to artifacts, better stability, higher image quality, it's simply far superior. In all honesty, it brings AMD's upscaling right on the level with Nvidia. Unfortunately, because DLSS has been doing machine learning based upscaling from the very beginning, they simply have far more support. That is, until now. Thanks to new update from the free software OptiScaler. For those who don't know, this essentially takes certain upscaling tech and either upgrades it to a newer one or even upgrades it across vendors. And as you can see right down here in this new update, they actually add FSR4. And pretty quickly, you'll notice that it only adds support in DirectX 12, as well as DirectX 11, but it doesn't add support in Vulkan, at least not yet. Not only that, but this is actually something that some outlets have gotten wrong. While it does say via FSR3 update, it does not mean that it only upscales from FSR3. It actually only takes FSR2+, plus or DLSS2+, plus and I believe even XESS, and it can do all of that and upscale those to FSR4. The reason it says FSR3.x or via FSR3.x update is because it's taking the SDK update for FSR4 in FSR3, and it's using that to upscale it to FSR4. Now, with that said, unfortunately, it it does still require RDNA 4 GPUs, meaning if you're interested in doing this, while yes, it is free, you do unfortunately still need an RX 9000 GPU. Not only that, but you do want to take caution when you're doing this because as they state, do not use this mod with online games because it may trigger anti-cheat software and cause bans. So do be warned of this and it also isn't a perfect just click a button and it works, but what it does mean is that now you can add FSR4 to a ton more games. And next up for today, AMD silently released a gaming CPU late last year that turned out to be a really good chip for the money, but it had one flaw. It only released in a couple locations worldwide. That CPU is of course the Ryzen 5 7600X3D, a 6-core 12-thread CPU with AMD's 3D vCache that turned out to be incredibly efficient and still great at gaming, though you wouldn't want to use it much for more professional applications. Either way, as it states right down here, it only launched at Micro Center in the US and Mind Factory in Germany. These were the official distribution for these SKUs. Well, the great news is that that might soon change, as some European retailers have now listed a Ryzen 5 7600X3D at their stores. You can see it right here and right here, though it doesn't actually have an image of the CPU. Now, that's not too surprising, but what is surprising is that these new SKUs have a new OPN, or AMD product code. And as it states, that suggests that this might not be the same CPU that launched last year. Now, given the fact that the name is the same, unless this is some kind of odd placeholder, it likely is essentially the same chip. It 
could just be a new product code potentially for selling it to way more people. I'm not really sure that part is up in the air, but at least according to this, it does seem like the 7600X3D is about to be way more widely available. And you can see that the pricing isn't too bad. 249 pounds without fat, 299 pounds with, 273 euros, though with that, we're looking at 328. Either way, like I said, really not too bad, and it definitely does look to be the case, but I will be on the lookout for why exactly they have a new product code. Like I said, make sure you subscribe so you can stay up to date on all this news. And lastly for today, with the launch of AMD's RX 9000 GPUs, we learned that the company was moving away from competing at the high end. Obviously, the 4090 more or less beat them out of that anyway, but it was clear that AMD was at least trying with their 7900 XDX. Well, I've got some great news because AMD is apparently moving back to high-end gaming GPUs with their next-gen cards. At least, that's what one very well-known and accurate leaker seems to suggest. As you can see right here, it says, according to one of the most reliable AMD leakers, Kepler L2, AMD's upcoming uDNA GPU generation will reintroduce higher end GPU configurations with up to 96 compute units in the top end Navi 5 SKU. Now, for reference, the 9070 XT only comes with 64 compute units. And of course, this is not only a new generation, but a completely different architecture when compared to current gen. Don't forget that AMD is planning to combine their RDNA and CDNA architecture into uDNA. Now, as I've said before, it's a little odd because they originally went from another architecture, split it to RDNA and CDNA. Now they're saying, oops, we kind of messed up and are doing it again with uDNA. Either way, this is said to be a massive change in architecture, so we could even see an increase in performance per core like what they did with RDNA 4, though I don't have any kind of leaks or anything like that suggesting it. It's just the fact that this will likely be a pretty big change. Either way, even if it is the same, going from 64 to 96 is of course a massive jump. Not only that, but according to this, it's also paired with a 384-bit bus for memory. Now, they state that we still don't know what type of memory AMD will ultimately use, but an early assumption could be GDDR7 is on the table. Of course, don't forget that if AMD uses the same tech that they have now or something similar, they don't necessarily need really fast memory because they more or less use a cache sort of in between that to ultimately speed it up. Either way, this is some really exciting news, and it definitely can't come soon enough given the outlandish prices of some of NVIDIA's highest end cards, particularly the 5090. Of course, I don't want to get your hopes up too high. We have sort of heard this before. We know that AMD was actually working on a very high-end GPU with their RDNA 4 cards, and obviously that was ultimately scrapped. Still though, this is really great news, and fingers crossed, it ultimately comes true. So while that does it for today, did you want AMD to get back into high-end GPUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.